Hey, everybody. <laughs> Welcome to another episode of the Unsecurity Podcast. I'm your host, Oscar Meeks, joined by the always wonderful Brad Nye. Hey, Brad, how are you doing today? Doing good. Doing good. How are you? Doing excellent, man. Doing excellent. Thanks for asking. Uh, we have a special guest today. You guys have met yeah. before. before. Uh, Mr. What, what did Erica call you got here? Mr. Ostra himself. Yeah, Mr. Ostra. Yeah, Mr. Cap- 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 Ostra himself. Michael Kennedy is joining us. <laughs> hey, Michael, how are you doing today, man? Good. I am fantastic. I'm here in Montana. It's beautiful. So. Yeah, so full disclosure, Kennedy and I are sitting on my front porch in Montana right now. And um, while well, you guys are dealing with rain, we always got to talk about the weather, Brad. Yeah, it's uh, dealing with rain. Uh, it's beautiful. 70 degrees here, sunny skies. And all my homies back in Kentucky right now, it's like 95 degrees there with you know, 75% humidity and a dew point at 71, which means you just don't go outside when that happens. You just are uh, sticky. As soon as you yeah, walk outside, right. you get sticky. See, I'm not sticky. I'm just sweaty when I yeah. walk out of that. I immediately just turn into a big wet sponge. Yep. <laughs> same. I'm the same. Yeah. Well, cool. Yeah. So thanks for joining us, Michael. Uh, quick news tidbit before we dig in. Uh, was an article put up on Project Hafi this week, a zero-click Outlook RCE, so remote code execution vulnerability. Uh, this one's kind of scary because all you have to do is open the email, and if they have embedded code into that properly, uh, you can be compromised by just interacting with that email. Um, yeah, so there's patch. The patch is, is important. Go patch. It wasn't rated a critical, which we call in the article, which kind of blows my mind considering there's a POC, considering the ease of exploitability. Uh, came in at an 8.8. Uh, so just take notice of that. If you're running through patching right now, I would, I would uh, escalate that through critical and emergency patching, patching yeah. process because that's going to be a nasty one, and we're certainly going to see that in the wild. Yep, I agree. Not cool. fun. I'm glad I don't have to manage my uh, IT shop anymore. Yeah. You guys don't miss those, like, emergency patch rollout days? No, Patch Mondays, yeah. Microsoft. No. Yeah. No. no. Yep. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. I can remember when uh, heart bleed vulnerability. Oh yeah, hit. You remember that? Mm-hmm. Yep. Uh, I was on vacation with my wife. We we're in Florida for her birthday. Oof. I was planning a vacation <clears throat> around it, and this is the time I was running like the enterprise vulnerability management team uh, for a large corporation. We had roughly thirty thousand hosts that we need to apply patches oh, wow. to. And, you know, the thing about an emergency patch rollout is it doesn't care if you're on vacation or not. <laughs> so, <Nope. laughs> that was a lot of fun coordinating that while trying to have a good time uh, down in Florida. Yeah, See, that, yeah uh, I have nightmares. Uh, no. So Heart Bleed was a good thing for me because I, have, I was working on a little security project yeah. that wasn't getting any funding. And Heart Bleed happened and they decided, oh, Mike's project needs a $100 million budget. Yeah. Go. You got six months to deploy. And yeah. Like, fantastic. I will say this. That's I mean, that was. Yeah. I think a lot of uh, executive leaders had that same response uh, yeah. when Harpley came out. I was like, holy crap, this does affect me. Correct. That was so widespread that there were, you know, that thought process of not going to be me nope. uh, immediately dissolved for so many leaders during that time period because they saw the effect. Yeah. I remember yeah. the first one that I had to deal with was the I love you virus, and it just blew up <laughs> yeah. our exchange server. And, that took, I, that was a nightmare to clean up because we had to shut everything off and then go in and manually clean everything out. It was, oh. <laughs> Back in the good old days, I love you. I forgot all about that one, Brad. Yeah. <laughs> I just remember getting the call and all of a sudden, like, all the alerts were going off on the Exchange server and everybody was, like, calling in, like, what is this? And, oh. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> No. Yeah. Back in the good old days then, too, just thinking about how ransomware used to just be deployed on one system. Sure. You remember yeah. that? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Couldn't talk to everything else. Yeah. Yep. <laughs> or that. Or, used to be such a or, micro problem. Or, or when you had to worry about when you'd get the link uh, that somebody would send you the EXE file and you'd open it up and it'd be like, hey, everybody, I'm watching porn over here. Oh, yeah. And, and you're like, oh, I mean, that was like the level of threat you had to worry yeah. about. Right. Is, yeah the practical jokes that these things started. At, so. <laughs> I mean, I can remember doing jokes like that when we were in an office oh, yeah. space and, you know, it was just simple stuff where we would like 
kind of mess with people and just eject their CD-ROMs, you know, and have a little script. And I remember there was a guy <laughs> that we shared office space with, and it just infuriated him. Yeah. You know, I'd have this little script, and he would come in, sit down with a cup of coffee, and the CD-ROM would just go, zzz, and come open. He's like, what? And he would close it. you wait 15 minutes. We'd do it, you know, 50 times in a yep. day, and this guy's losing his mind over right. here. <laughs> I think he needs a new computer. Yep. <laughs> yeah, he'd take over people's mice and yeah. stuff, too. Yeah. And, yeah. Yep. We would change. We would change. Uh, one, we had one guy who was a huge Cowboys fan in in the DC metro area. We were all Washington uh, Commanders fans, but we changed all of his sounds to the Washington fight song, just like uh, the last yeah. minutes of it. So like it would, but it would be like the chorus of it or whatever. And yeah. it drove him insane. <laughs> we uh, keep changing it back remotely. Right. right. Yep. It's fantastic. I remember some other pranks we used to pull. I probably can't talk about here, no. but we'll talk about them at another time. Yeah. yeah. We, we've been around as long as we have. You, you've probably got some good stories. Yeah, yeah, for sure. For sure. Yep. Well, cool. I think today I want to kind of talk about, you know, continue our topic. It's um, We talk a lot about mental health here. Uh, we know that there are challenges in mental health in our space very predominantly. Um, I know we had a really good episode last year. We kind of dipped, dug in on imposter syndrome. That was really valuable. I had people reach out to me and say that was meaningful. Um, another topic I want to kind of hit in those same lines today is the idea of burnout. And I do think that burnout's a big one as well. Mm -hmm. um, leads directly with, you know, our negative mental health. And so, like, I don't know, just kind of want to dig into that, uh, talk about maybe strategies that we could have for, preventing burnout, uh, maybe even just some things that you guys do to try to acknowledge burnout and burnout is approaching and how we try to respond to that and support our people around us. And maybe just open this up with a question. And uh, I think I know the answer to it. Like, we'll start with you, Kennedy, and the same question for you, Brad. Like, have you guys ever been affected by burnout yourself? Uh, yes. Yeah. In, yeah. in various various levels of burnout and, and various things, mm -hmm. really, it's not just it's, you know, it's kind of that getting that fatigue on, um, you know, at work, dealing with customers, getting fatigued, um, those 2 a.m., trying mm -hmm. to figure out how to write some script and, and, and paying attention. And a lot, a lot of the times, too, for me in the past, it's been I don't recognize I'm in it until, yeah. Yeah. Um, you know, somebody says something. Or I have, I've, you know, I've gotten that su such a large sense of exasperation that I am not wanting to get out of bed. Mm -hmm. um, you know, I, I don't, I don't know. I mean, that new, uh, je that Jelly Roll, new Jelly Roll song, yeah. I am not okay. Yeah. That that song for me, I mean, a lot of those the words in there are hit home a lot of mm -hmm. like when you know I wake up in the morning and I just I don't want to get out of bed. I right. just want to you know suck it in and. And that, to me, is a lot of times where that burnout comes from. Sure, yeah, and, sure. But I, the other thing too is I think you know, when I always, whenever we talk about burnout, is you know, burnout is a, a different level for everybody. So your level of burnout and my level and the three of us, our level of burnout to doing the same tasks, you know, is going to be different. Sure. And so having that expectation of that somebody is, you know. Uh, working really hard on stuff or grinding away and being concerned about the burnout, they might not be getting burned out, mm -hmm. but also the same level of where I think I can, I can do it all day long. Um, because, and everybody else should, you know, mm -hmm. recognizing that, that we're all at different, different, um, yeah. Levels yeah. That, so. I think it's, you know, that's a really good point is we all have different kind of breaking points, I would say. Yeah. Yep. And there are certain situations, I've talked about this a lot and really thought about this too. It's like in some situations, I feel like of chaos, my brain feeds on that. Yeah. You know? Agreed. And, yeah, I do too. And it's weird. Thanks. Like I can be in those situations and I actually feel good and my brain feels better. Yeah. And especially when you can like work your way through that chaos, yep. it's yep. so rewarding. Yeah. Right. Yep. Yep. But I see other people in that moment of chaos and it becomes completely overwhelming and if that moment of chaos is kind of part of the role which you know like working in like for me when i was you know managing a sock before or overseeing knock like it's continuous chaos right, right. continue yep. and i thrived in that but right. i've seen other people burn really quickly yeah. in that yeah. situation yep and so we all have and it's really like i think 
think it's different levels, just different skills, right? Yep. You know, it's how their minds work and what feeds our brain, what's right. fulfilling for our brain. And we all have to accept we're not the same, yeah. you know, and what causes you burnout or me burnout may not someone else and vice versa. What's affecting them yep. at a higher level, even though it wouldn't affect you, like it's still real, right? We have to right. acknowledge that for people. Yeah, no, I'm, I'm with you. The chaos, I, I, I thrive in it. And it's mm -hmm. to me where I burned out is, and thankfully I'm not eight years here and not feeling it at all, which is nice. And I think it's the growth and the chaos of mm -hmm. just what we do that helps. But it's when you get into that repetitive, boring, like you're just fighting the yeah. same things over and over and you're not making progress. And you just feel like, or at least, I, you know, you get to the point where like, why am I doing this? Like, mm -hmm. I'm just doing the same thing. I'm banging my head against the wall. We're not doing anything that needs to be done. And you just get, I get frustrated with not mm -hmm. making progress. And that's where I, that's where my burnout comes is just. No, I share that with you too, Brad. Um, yeah. Too much structure and too much repetition. You know, yeah. if my day is already planned before I start my day yeah. and I have, you know, continuous weeks of that it starts to really negatively yeah. impact me mentally and i won't say burnout but i can feel like the stress rise you right. know yeah it's so, when yeah. it goes on for months you know mm -hmm. that's when it yeah you, i get yeah. stressed out same thing but it's like when there's not a light at the end of the tunnel where you just kind of go mm -hmm. I, i'm just going through the motions yeah when, when you, you said you know light at the end of the tunnel kind of one of the things i think about too is is what if there isn't a light at the end of the tunnel mm -hmm. or, you know, and in those situations, I mean, we have projects, we have stuff that, you know, I, you know, I, I can relate it to being on the river and floating a section and the winds blowing you up river mm -hmm. and you're frustrated. Yeah. And I'm just, I want to be off this, but you can't stop. Mm -hmm. And so in, in those moments for me, it's, it's, it's how to find that, kind of moment of downtime or moment of release or moment of a sure. acceptance that yes, I'm feeling burnout and, you know, trying to find, like you said, where is that, that moment where I'm not going to, I can kind of calm myself or not calm myself, but get that reset, a mental reset, reset. Yeah, a mental reset. Yeah. And, and how to, how to, how to do that. Yeah. That's a really good point. And, you know, that's a tip. I think that, um, hopefully we give takeaways to people when they listen. Yeah. Um, but I know personally for me, yep. um, it's a big deal for me to recognize the indicators, right? Yeah. Just yeah. like if we're thread hunting, I'm looking for indicators of compromise. Right. I'm looking for my own indicators of compromise. And really I'm compromised when I get into a mental <laughs> state where either I'm high stress level or, I, mm -hmm. or I'm approaching burnout. Yeah. And for me, like the big thing I notice is my irritability. Right? And I think everybody has different reactions to that, but, but I, I become a little more irritable. I become a little more short in conversations and responses with yeah, people. Yep. And so I work to say, I want to identify that so I can be self-aware. Yeah. And for me, it is exactly what you said. When I identify that, sometimes the only way for me to fix that is to get out of it and go yeah. do something yep. that's grounding for me. Right. And it's just a mental reset. And a lot of times it is exactly what you said. And, you know, to be transparent, like I had a pretty stressful couple of weeks at work yeah. and, uh, you know, it's kind of been a couple of days where I can't turn off the mind. And that's, right. yeah. you know, another sign for me when I'm continually thinking about things until 11 o'clock at night or midnight until I fall asleep. As soon as I wake up, my mind's back on that yeah. track. I need to go do something to reset. And so yesterday evening, you know, my wife and I have to work. Hey, let's go do a short float on the river. We do that. I get off the river and I felt like a brand new person. I right. woke up today. I felt better. I felt more focused and relaxed. And so I say all that to say it's important to recognize yourself, but as leaders too, it's important yeah. to recognize that in our employees, uh -huh. right? Yep. Yes. And understanding too that everybody's fix isn't the same as yours, Correct. you know? And so making sure though, you just have that conversation with your employee. Yep. And this is why I talk a lot about like as a, a leader, I think it's important that we focus on our professional growth and our business goals, but it's also very important to focus on those personal goals and the right. personal growth of your employees. Yep. So learn that, learn those indicators of them and then support them, whatever mechanism that is. So you can help them get that mental reset. Yeah. Yeah. Great. yeah. One of the things, you know, I mean, I think I've been fairly open about some of the mental health stuff with that I struggled with. And I've been working with my therapist and, and one of the, there's a couple of things that have really helped me. And if you're getting like anxious or feeling overwhelmed is to cool your body. Right. So in the winter here in Minnesota, that's easy. You go stand outside for 30 seconds. 
Yeah. But in yeah. the summer, I would just no way. What, what I do is I go stick my head in the deep freezer and take in three or four really deep breaths of cold air. And it resets yeah. your sympathetic nerve system. And it, I could not believe that it was. She told me that. And I was like, no way. Yeah, what? And, no way. And I did it. And I was like, holy <laughs> crap. That worked really well. <laughs> Uh, oh, and and the other thing is, you know, doing something that engages multiple senses. So like gardening yeah, or weeding, yeah. right? So getting out of your headspace and going and resetting, mm -hmm. just find that something that engages multiple senses. Yeah, yeah. We were talking about that. Like if you have an activity that can engage all five of your senses at the same time, it can almost like force that reset when you're yeah. really involved and really focused on doing yeah. that. And it doesn't yeah. take long to do. Like. Mm -hmm. you know five minutes and just all of a sudden it's like oh yeah oh cool i'm not feeling that stress anymore i'm, I'm feeling yeah. like refreshed mm -hmm. right. i i also think too of um because mine is like small engines i love smelling two cycle sure. for some reason yeah. Yeah. getting my hands greasy because then i can't touch a keyboard afterwards right um but then also uh talking about it yeah. having those that and uh, you know I, I driving out here i was talking to a, an old fr a friend of mine and we started kind of talking about some of those shared life experiences mm -hmm. and telling him you know some of the things that he's going to be going through to stay ahead of that burnout i mean mm -hmm. he's, he just founded a company and he's just talking about all the stress associated with it and i'm just like you're not alone mm -hmm. you know there's three of us that are, you know are talking about it is you know, we're not alone. If, you know, when we're open and saying, "I'm I'm feeling burnt out," mm -hmm. what do you do to yeah. to help manage? Mm -hmm. You know, tearing that down or taking away that stigma mm -hmm. is is really important. Yeah, and that's tough for people. You know, that's being vulnerable, right? Yeah. And it's really challenging, especially in his position. You're supposed to be a leader. You yeah. got to be strong for yep. those around you. Right. So we get stuck in this mentality that it's not okay to be vulnerable. That's a weakness to be right. vulnerable. But the reality is, it's no. the exact opposite of that. Yep. I think yeah. when you find that you are vulnerable and you're open, you allow yourself the opportunity to learn and improve yep. uh, through your support right. community. Yep. Yep. And then you, you, the shadow you cast too in that of like it, in Austria, I've been very open about, you know, stuff that I've been struggling with, my being overwhelmed, mm -hmm. uh, burnout and all of those things. And, you know, and I've had employees come up and have like have commented on they feeling the same way about something and, and being OK to come and talk about it mm -hmm. and, and not feel judged. And because, you know, we're creating this. You know, we're our sh the shadow that we're casting out yeah. there is. Yeah, I think it's like we all want to create this space of belonging where yeah, everybody yeah. feels like they yep. do belong. And it's yep. just like we talk about security, right? Yeah. It's got to come from the top down. If your yep. leaders yep. aren't exercising these things, then your people are never going to believe it. And so, yep. like, we have to really exercise what we believe in. Yeah. You know, what's funny is <laughs> when you start talking about it, you realize you're not alone. And just mm -hmm. knowing that you're not alone makes such a difference. Yeah. Yeah, completely. Yep. Another point I wanted to bring up, um, and this is something like I've kind of thought about and changed a lot of my habits over the last year uh, through self-reflection of this, is the always on mentality. Yeah. Mm -hmm. You know, and that's something that I was that directly led to my led to my burnout in the past yeah. was always on mentality. And, you know, it's just like you talk about, you get those emergency calls at two o'clock in the morning and it happens three or four nights a week and you're never sleeping right. And, you know, all the things about it. And, you know, that's one thing here, like at FR secure, like I don't want to have, and I, I know like shout out to my CSERT team, like those guys are busy and there's yeah. sometimes some of those guys have to, you know, work extended hours to get through these incidents. Uh, but we always try to reward them afterwards and get right. some time to recover and refresh so you're not right. constantly doing that. Right. Um, but I thought about, like, my own personal habits, right? Yeah. And so, you know, what does that message send? Where sometimes I do like to, if I'm feeling stressed or for whatever, I need to take this time to step away and then come back. And sometimes at night I'll work, you know. I'll yeah. spend two or three hours at night just kind of going through getting caught up, formulating my thoughts. And then I thought about the impact that had of me like sending communications yeah. at 10 o'clock at night, at right. 11 o'clock yeah. at night, right? Yep. And then people receiving that, and yep. they they think yeah. like, oh, shoot, I've got to respond right. to this, right? Yeah. yeah. And so like even though my intention is never to force them into an always-on mentality, mm -hmm. um, inadvertently I was yeah. doing so by sending those communications at hours where they felt like, oh, and also, well, he's working 
always on. I need to do that too. Yeah. And it's the furthest thing from the truth. And so I reflected on that. And now I don't send those emails anymore. That's Typically, right. like I don't work on things, I'll hold those emails and send them yeah. there in business hours the right. next day. So I'm not yeah. putting that yeah. unneeded stress yeah, on you, people around you me. You can queue them up. And yeah. Too. Yeah. yeah. The other thing, I actually, I, I took email, work email off my phone. Yeah. I'm, I'm remote. I'm at my desk. If it, you know, if I'm not at my desk, I can hear if somebody pings me on Teams. I usually don't have emails that are, you know, oh my God, you know, why didn't you respond in 30 minutes type of mm -hmm. things? It's, you know. Yeah, and then the reality yeah. too, you know, is like, Brad, we all know, like, we really need you. I'll just give you a ring, man, or shoot you a text. Yeah. Hey, you got to make it's really talk. critical. Everybody yeah. has my contact. Yeah. Yeah. Well. Yeah. I mean, the reality of that too is I think that's less stressful, you yeah. know. It's like, so, you know, Brad, a couple weeks ago, I, I felt bad, like, hitting Brad up on a Sunday. But it's like, oh, crap, we're doing this thing tomorrow. And I forgot to think with Brad about it, like, Brad's That's a cool chat. I've forgotten too. Yeah. Absolutely. <laughs> <laughs> but inadvertently, like I'm probably still like, um, you know, um, producing uh, or doing things that still yeah. inherently make Brad think uh, he needs to always be on it. I don't want that, you know. And if no. Brad would say, no, it's Sunday, bro. I'm busy. I'd have been like, okay, cool. No worries. Talk to you later, man. <laughs> yeah. No, yeah, I know. I know that. So you're, you're good. I actually, I really struggle with that, to be honest. Um, I try to set the precedent that if the same kind of thing, if I'm emailing you, I don't care when you get back to me. Yeah. If I'm sending you a Teams, maybe today, maybe tomorrow. Right. And then, or phone call, if I really want something, a phone call. Yeah. Yep. But what I, I struggle with too is like, so the, the team will go on PTO and I'm like, oh, I better text them real quick because I have a question. Yeah. And it's like, why? why? And, yeah, and, right. And, and struggling, I struggle with that or sending a Teams while I know they're on PTO. And a couple of times I've caught myself. Mm -hmm. and I'm ready to text somebody or call them. It's like, hey, you got a minute to chat. I'm like, wait a minute. No, I need to give them the space. Yeah, give them the space. Right. Yeah. You yeah. Know, because, you know, yeah. it, and it's and so it's the same kind of reflection that, on, that I have is because I want, I have that same feeling. And then also the, you know, yeah, it, as a leader, it's our mentality is going to be a little bit different because we're seeing the broader pieces of the organization right. and, or in my case, you know, this, this is my baby yep. and my baby, I know I need to make sure my baby gets the teenage years. Yeah, right. So I have a little bit more, you know, care, but yeah, so that is, that's something I've been, I've been specifically trying to work on lately is right. respecting those things yeah. a little bit more. So it's yeah. really important, you know, and it's the same type of thing, right? Where if you do text them, they're probably going to respond to you. They're probably going to tell you it's no big deal. It doesn't matter. Right. Uh, but at the end of the day, like it's just enforcing still that always right. on mentality, right. which we yeah. know continually leads to pulls yeah. them out of a vacation. Yeah. It the really hit home um, when my wife pointed it out. Like she's like, you yeah, know, think about all the times you brought your laptop or you responded to Ina and how it took you out of vacation mode. And yeah, you know, and I was like, damn. If they're yeah. if, if the wife and kids are noticing that it's like negatively impacting you and calling you out on it, then yeah, it's probably a problem. So mm -hmm. now yeah. I, I will. I mean, if I'm taking PTO, I know if there's an emergency, you or Megan or whoever will call or text. Yeah. And otherwise, I don't worry about it. And, and I, at the end of the day, too, you know our stance here. It's kind of like back to what he was saying. It's like we will do everything exhaust every effort before yeah. i will ever call anyone on pto i yeah. want you to enjoy that time with your family it's hard to do. it is yeah. so hard because it, it you i mean for so long i was hardwired to like you were saying like all right i gotta be always on i gotta be aware of what's going yeah. on there's too much happening and the, the first yeah. time i went on vacation without email my phone or my laptop i was like the first couple of days man i was sweaty palms and antsy you're like oh, what am yeah. i missing what am i missing and then it's like yeah. i get back and nothing there was no fires and i'm like oh yeah everything was fine right yeah, hey, yeah. Cool. i can remember that feeling and being in those high stress jobs in the past where it was i was you know forced and always on and when i would take my vacation brad it would take me it's had a week off it'd take me three to four days yeah, yeah. to really relax you know, and then when I would really relax three, four days in, I'd be like, oh, I only got three days left. Right, <laughs> yeah, right. That's a new and type of stress. Yeah. 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 <laughs> so it was really hard to switch into that. And I think it's like, you know, through practicing those techniques we're talking about right now, yeah. like giving yourself those like micro moments to be able to go into that feeling of relaxation. And it's, it's just like meditation, right? right. Like yeah. 
practicing to relax your body and your mind, uh, the more you try to do that, the better you get at it. And so you're easier to fall into these, you know, places of, of being at peace and being able to reflect and be grounded uh, much faster than if you're always forced into the always on mentality. Yeah, yeah. Agreed. yeah one Agreed. of the things that I've been doing, and it just works for me, is I found it, it's a basically like a jigsaw puzzle type of thing on, on my mm -hmm. iPad, but it's got very calming meditative music. And I'll just go do that for 30 minutes and do a couple of these. Yeah. And, but it allows me to engage both sides where I can like work on the puzzle, which is the reward piece. It's got that calming sense to it. Mm -hmm. And then I, I can just let my mind kind of wander and think through things and work through things. And it just, you know, find that thing that w works for you, whatever it yeah. is. But that's easy for me because I, I can just, it's raining outside. I can't go work in the yard. Oh, well, I'll just go take the first 30 minutes of my lunch and reflect and relax. Mm -hmm. And then, man, I'm just so much more energized in the afternoon. Have you played Wordscapes? You've done that one yet? Yeah. Yeah, yeah I, did. I do word I do word searches. I have a big word search book. I uh -huh. buy them at like, you know, whatever. Yes. Yeah. Just, just look for word searches. Nice. And it's like, yeah, I'll do that in meetings too. Yeah. I'll just, I have one on my desk. I'll pull it out. And, but it, it does, you're right. It, it pulls me out enough that I can start to daydream. Mm -hmm. And yeah. that's really where we want to be is in that, because that's when we think of the new ideas. Yeah. Or, solutions to so yeah it relaxes it. your mind right yeah yep. yeah 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 so another thing i know we're about out of time here mm -hmm. um just, just thought about this too i know something for me like another indicator i tried to recognize is like whenever um i get overwhelmed sometimes i feel like you can't do anything you feel like you're yeah. stuck right you right. get like really lethargic or like you're stuck in mud Yep. And like, that's another big indicator for me. And again, it's kind of like we we're talking about before, give myself space and reflecting. And then I operate, I do really like using lists, man. Just like oh, yeah. I use a pen and paper and I make out my list. Like where are all the things that stress me out? I need to figure yeah. out right now. Yeah. And then like reflecting upon that list and it's just like, okay, what do we do? We can do one thing at a time. That's right. it. So which thing am I going to do now? Yeah. And that sometimes will help me like get out of that, um, like I don't know what your paralysis yeah. type of it, mental it paralysis like analysis paralysis yeah. <laughs> yeah analysis paralysis right and just but again like what works for me isn't going to work for everybody no, no. but try to identify what those tools are yeah. that can help you get out of those moments and it's like all those little things that we're talking about today that culminate into ultimate burnout and you know I think everybody's unique it's just having this conversation been vulnerable like Kennedy brought up and sharing it with the peers and those around you <laughs> probably going to have unique perspectives and unique offerings for you and yeah. don't don't be afraid to try things like, like yeah. one of the things that really really helps for me regardless of what stigma you may think is attached to it i actually started i cross stitch i've cross stitch since i was mm -hmm. like 10 or 12 and I can t i'll tell you why i know the what a lineman for the washington team back in the 80s was on the news and he crocheted and he did it to keep his fingers like, mm, yeah, you know, yep. and I was playing all three, you know, baseball, basketball, and football. And I was like, oh, that's a really good idea because right, you get jammed up and everything. And crocheting this wasn't for me, but cross stitch, it just it satisfies that itch of like, yeah, the the OCD of doing it. But it also, you know, I can kind of veg out with a movie or a TV show, but still mm -hmm. feel like I'm accomplishing something. Well, and you, and, have yeah. the, you have the creativity there in there too with it yeah. as well mm -hmm. that you're creating something and you have an accomplishment and then i get to you know for me it's i give it to someone i'm doing it for someone so there's also that reward of knowing right. that somebody's going to you know feel good about whatever it is mm -hmm. so yeah, yeah i, I love, love that piece of advice too brad like don't think about what other people would think like screw yeah. stereotypes do what's best for you do what makes yeah. you happy and what you, makes you feel good and if someone else doesn't like that or that's something negative to say yeah. that's probably an indicator maybe they're a stressor in your life as well right. you should you know think about yeah. that yeah 100 percent. yeah agree. yep cool well, this has been an awesome conversation uh thanks michael for hopping on yeah thanks, thanks for thanks having brad me. for thanks. being here thanks always brad. like to close out with some gratitude a shout out to someone or anybody or a group of people i'm going to start today um i will say like i mentioned earlier i've had a couple you know stressful weeks of work which has happened it's okay to have a hard day 
it's not okay to have a bad day. Right. Uh, you know, saying that I really enjoy, but really shout out to our whole company right now. We just had our company party last That's week. So and awesome. Even though work has been stressful, that was a completely awesome uh, couple of days to get to spend time with everyone, meet everyone, and uh, really have just a group of amazing people. And I uh, love every one of them. And it was really awesome just getting to spend that time with everyone. So Such my shout out to the whole team. So I agree. Yeah. I'll give uh, my shout out is, well, yes, I agree with you, the company, but I'm going to give it to uh, my daughter who graduated uh, a couple weeks ago with a, like a 4.18 GPA and like yeah. high wow. college credits. So shout out to her. Definitely did not get her study habits from me. Got those from mom. But uh, yeah, really yeah that's awesome. Her. Congratulations. Yeah, uh, cool. And yeah, shout out to her as well. Yeah, I, 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 as I was thinking, I was just thinking everybody and everything, you know, I mean, specifically the Austria team, you know, they, they've been grinding through a lot of stuff lately and same kind of thing. And, and I've been really grateful that everybody's kind of, kind of gone through it with maturity and, and, you know, the right goal. Um, so very grateful there. Um, grateful that them and my family allowed me to come out here to Montana for you know, a week or so to, to go fishing and give me that space to re recharge from burnout. So, yeah. yeah. And Heck you, yeah. and you for having me. Both of you guys. <laughs> so. Heck yeah. Glad to have you, man. All right. Thanks everybody for tuning in. Uh, we will be back in a few weeks. Have a great day. See you.